this next image here with the rainbow of Cabriana, uh, capturing this a few years ago was, was a real pinch myself moment. Um, got some shots here. This, these top images here was the sunset the night before. Well, that didn't come to anything. That was pretty boring. So I thought, and it was a full moon, so I thought, right, let's get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. No, that was boring. Didn't do anything. So I, um, uh, I went back to bed for a couple of hours. I thought, okay, let's try sunrise. I went back, and um, initially it was raining. I had to retreat back to the car, and then it stopped. Right, go and have another go. And then I just um, set up my equipment on this on the sloping ground, and I hadn't, hadn't even leveled the tripod properly when this rainbow started to appear. And um, if I just zoom in on the timestamps here, just so you can see here, and uh, let's do this. Oops, no, sorry, let's try that again. So, this is a little bit tricky with our mouse. So you can see here, the rainbow is just starting to appear at 7.39 a.m. The next frame over, it was intense for about 30 seconds at 7.40. And then it was fading away two minutes later at 7.42. Um, so you can safely say I was pretty pleased with that. Um, these next two, two images are of an old gold mining town up above, Mace, um, up above Arrowtown, a little place called Mace Town. And this top image here, the Golden Years and Valley of Gold. Um, but when I first got up here, I well just, sorry, just skip a couple there. Getting up here is a real mission. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever ventured up there. Um, this was uh, 10 years ago now when I went up here. I've flown down, so I had a rental car, and I'm sure the budget would have been most impressed to see me driving there, there <laughs> rental through the river. At one point, I had water lapping over the bonnet. I said, Shit, don't stop now. <laughs> um, and, you know, caution beat forward and all the, all the plates of the car that didn't quite make it. So, you know, being such a mission to get there, uh, when I first got up there, I was like, oh, you know, and what can I shoot? So I spent some time, and um, this is the old bakery up there. It's one of only two, two buildings that remain, which have been restored by Doc. But the first image, the golden years, I simply chopped the top and bottom off that first frame. You can see, I was looking into the sun mid-afternoon. The sun was quite low in the sky, being autumn. And, you know, ordinarily that would be a no-no to be shooting into the sun but sometimes you have to break the rules. And um, initially I, I thought that the other images here, I'd, I'd sport them with my hand being too low, but by the time I stitched those five together and then just cropped off a little bit, I was able to um, remove my hand. So, um, and here's Valley of Gold uh, in a triptych in, uh, in Wichianga. Um, it was, it was, you know, it was a mission well worthwhile. Uh, this next image here, uh, High Country Master, is quite a timeless image. Um, it, you could have captured, you could have taken that a hundred years ago, and it really wouldn't have changed much. You've got the metal road, the musterer on horseback, but it almost didn't happen. This was on the road to Lake Clearwater, which is just in, uh, inland from. Mount Summers in Canterbury. And I was driving along, and when I saw the musterer and the cows on the road, I thought, oh, great, this is, there's a great image to be had here. So I stopped, and then of course the cows stopped. Um, the musterer hurried them up, and then seconds later I took this shot, they were just all around me, and the shot was lost. So I was, I was like, oh, bugger. So thoroughly annoyed with myself, I continued up the end of the road uh, to Erewhon Station, came back down and then uh, about, a, about an hour later it would have been, I was then behind, the, the cows were still on the road, but now of course I was behind them. 
So I thought, great, they don't stuff this up. So I just stayed in the car and I shot that through the windscreen. <laughs> My last image here, I call Jackpot, um, was one of those uh, unplanned days um, it's often, often when I find I get my best shots, they're not planned. The, the day before, I had planned a, uh, a trip down Skipper's Canyon, um, and that proved quite fruitless. But it was only in the last second that I decided to uh, take the nearest road and end up here. I've got um, a quick video here, just, I can show you that first. So this is what I saw as I came off the road. Um, the first snow had fallen the night before, and this day, um, the weather was just constantly changing. And unfortunately, we don't have sound here, but I actually, um, when you can hear the sound, there was a rainbow just here, I was like, oh, rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, the tree here uh, that I took that picture of, but I'll just go to the next slide here. So initially, um, I was attracted to all these leaves that were caught in the long grass, and they were beautifully backlit. So I was busy for half an hour mucking around here, and then I started to take pictures looking up Stuart's Gully here, and then for some un unknown reason, something made me turn around, with, and then I just happened to look over my shoulder, and, you know, there we are this rainbow, but uh, the wind and the driving rain was so challenging at that time, it was really difficult to get a clear shot. And you can see just on the right side of the rainbow there, there's a couple of droplets of rain on the lens. So I managed to get one shot, and then by the time I was able to clear the lens and get a second shot, the, uh, the light and the rainbow had already started to fade. Um, so, you know, again, just a, you've got to, you, you, there's a bit of luck involved with these things, of course, but you, you've got to make the effort, do your homework, and be there, uh, and take advantage of the opportunities and the conditions. Uh, but here it is here, uh, a few examples. At the top left, uh, printed on paper, uh, with a grey mat, uh, and on paper in the top right, with a white enamel frame around the canvas, uh, or a black one here. So there's all these different framing options you can do to customise a piece for somebody's home. And it was also the image that I chose uh, for the cover of my first book in 2017, Looking for the Light, which is really what sums it up for me. It's what it's all about, uh, landscape photography. It's all about the light. Um, and thank you very much for listening, and are there any questions? I haven't got a question, but I'd like to speak on behalf of, I'm sure, all the other galleries around that, that have your work and um, just a thank you. Your work thank is you. amazing. I'm and doing you guys. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you're, you're precise, you're, you are just really amazing and we're really grateful. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mel. Yes. Thank you. All um, of the above. If, um, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't do this without the support of my galleries, um, you know, and um, uh, it, it almost become like a part of the family, really. Mm -hmm. um, and if you go to my website, peterlaken.com, you'll, you'll see the list of galleries mm -hmm. that have my work, and um, please go and check them out. They're an awesome, awesome team, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a team effort, really, bringing mm -hmm. these pictures yeah. to the market, because I couldn't do that do what I do without them. Um, it's, you know, it's a, people don't have to have these pictures on their walls, so you've really got to um, put the hours in yeah. and go, you know, just make that extra effort. Um, it's not easy, but it's very rewarding. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything. Good for you. Yeah. I have a question, is photography art? Yes, it is when the photographer is an artist. Yeah. yeah.
Bad Cruise. I guess with photography, um, it is very accessible. Uh, I mean, like as I said at the start, you know, it's great that everybody, you know, these days we, you know, with digital photography, it's so instant. So you got, you can instantly see what you're looking at. Um, so there's those tools uh, which really help me when I'm out in the field. Um, you know, my iPhone is my best friend out there. You know, I can, I can shoot a panorama and visualise how it might be before I get all my gear out and set that up. It, it, it's a great tool. Um, but of course, there's, you know, like any art form, there's great painters, there's average painters, there's, there's all, it encompasses you know, a wide range. But I think um, I'm right in saying, you know, Kiwis, we're, you know, the number eight wire mentality it still rings true, so um, you know you sometimes hear, you might hear people say, "Oh, I can do that for <laughs> you." Know, you know, it's, it's, and, and the thing also is that people only see the end result. You know, they don't see um, the trips where you've come back empty-handed. They don't see all the other images that went. You know those. Uh, ones that didn't work out, they're only seeing the good ones. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, they think you have, you know, this marvelous life, you know, in and out of helicopters and seeing mm -hmm. this place and that. But I mean, in reality, I'd be lucky if I spend ten percent of my time out in the field. Mm -hmm. Probably more like five percent. Um, you know, when I do do these trips away, I cram an awful lot into them. Um, and I'm, I do my homework, and I know, well, I've got a good idea of what I'm aiming for. Usually that, you know, you've got to be flexible. I think if you have two, two set, a, uh, two fixed on what you're looking for, uh, that, can, that can be a hindrance, that can be a handbrake. You've really got to, you almost develop a bit of a sixth sense, really, um, with the weather particularly. Um, and you just sort of go, sort of trust your instincts really and go with the flow. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you just have to get out there and mm -hmm. take pictures. Really. Yeah. You're not yeah. going to see it sitting on the site for a home, so you just got to give it a go. Yeah. Um, Did you take photography at school? Or? Oh, not really, no, no. There was one, we didn't have any no. uh, a photography class at school. They do, of course, now. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, years, I mean, going back, yeah. tell my age now, <laughs> um, but years ago, I mean, I always thought, you know, back in the days where we used to put films in for processing and you'd get them a week or two later, mm -hmm. and then by the time you get that packet of photos, you forget what you've taken. That, I mean, that could have been weeks, months ago. Um, and I just, I just got hooked. I thought that whole uh, process was quite magical. Um, so I, I don't know. I just, I just sort of stuck to my knitting really, and just been a bit um, hard nosed with it, and try not to get sidetracked, um, and just stuck to my knitting really. I don't, I don't, you know. I've, I've done when I, I worked for a number of years on cruise ships overseas uh, as a photographer. And I did a lot of weddings, a lot of portraiture, um, and I've done that to death, really. So it was on one of the cruise ships. We're going back for oh, gosh, 2000, 2002. We were still shooting everything on film. Digital was just, you know, coming of age, and we got a large format printer on one of the ships I was on, and we were taking port studio portraits on formal notes, uh, scanning those onto just flatbed scanners and then printing them onto canvas. So I was like, oh, this is really cool, I like this. So I gave up floating around on the tin cans, came home, and one of the first things I did was get one of these large format printers and then just started playing with it. But fortunately, having that exposure to them on the ships, I was just a little bit ahead of people back here in New Zealand at that time. So I got a head start.
uh, just in front of where I was staying, there was a jetty, quite a long jetty going out into the water, and there was some yachts just anchored off. And um, I had an elderly friend with me, um, who often comes away on some of these long trips with me, her name is Nan, and I said, we had come back from dinner in Hadlock uh, just a little bit beforehand, and I just happened to say to her, oh, look at those little clouds, those nice fluffy clouds in the sky, isn't that nice? Didn't take any more notice. And then we got back inside, and I'm in the kitchen making a cup of tea, and then Nan says, oh, look, now, I was like, oh, bugger, oh, <laughs> and ran as quick as I could. But instead of stopping, I should have really stopped at the water's edge and taken something. But I gambled, no, I had to get to the end of the jetty. And it was a really long one. So I ran out to the end, looked up, yep, great. Got the camera out, got the, set, set everything, looked up, gone. You know, and it, it, was, it, was, it was one of those images that would, you know, you'd uh, be a book cover. It was, just, it was amazing. You know, these, the gorgeous light with the yachts and the clouds reflecting in the water. Mm -hmm. Just really kind of was stunning. So I still remember it in my mind. <laughs> 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 Not, can't do much with that though. <laughs> so you, you, but you, you know, like I say, you never stop learning. But you've just got to be so quick. And it's in those moments where you're really under pressure, um, what you do becomes quite intuitive. Um, and you just learn, bang, bang, bang. Uh, you, you, you just don't have time to muck around. You know, it, it just changes so quickly. And the light, you know, when, when you do, when you set up and you're taking images, a whole series of images through that changing light, it changes so quickly. But it's, if you can shoot the whole range, you know, because you never know. Because when you think it's not, it's not until you get home and you, you download them that you, and then uh, decide what the best images are. But if you only take a couple, and that's it, you're probably missing the best, the best part. Yeah. Anybody else? Just an observation for you. Uh, it seems to me that um, there's art and there's technique, but there's also a lot of uh, tenacity involved in your work. Mm -hmm. you, oh, don't keep, sure. you don't seem to give up. Mm -hmm. you've, you've got to be really uh, determined and passionate about it. Otherwise, you know, making those efforts and those wee hours. I mean, I think back to up at Cape Rianga. I mean, it's a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'd given up after shooting in the middle of it, I think it was about three o'clock in the morning when I tried the full moon, I could, I could have quite easily stayed in bed. Um, in the morning, but I thought, no, no, come this way, get up, go on, go on. You just got to push yourself. Um, and, you know, there's no guarantees, but it's often when you least expect it, that's when all of a sudden, and that, and that was that was just so freaky when that rainbow up there. It was almost, you know, quite spiritual up there. You know, there's no one up, and when you, that's the other thing, is when you're there in these places on your own, and these things are happening, it's, it's really, um, it's almost like an out-of-body experience sometimes, you know. It's quite, you know, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Oh, Can your images go onto glass? Is that can be used in bathrooms and backgrounds? Yeah, that's right, yeah. There's, there were some images there um, uh, that I showed, um, there was dark and mist, which was on a laundry splashback. Uh, but yeah, kitchen splashbacks and all sorts. Um, glass, you know, feature doors, all of that. I mean, so that's where it's printed. There's different processes, but the company I use for that, out of where they print directly to the glass. Um, so that's, some, some processes will use it, they'll print onto a film, and then that will stick to the glass, but that's not as good. Want, you want to print it directly to the glass. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so many things you can do. Great. Peter, um, do you see technology advancing from here very much? I mean, 
to us it's sort of like you've reached the epitome, but is, oh. where does this end? Well, where does it end? I don't know. Uh, I, I think with, um, certainly with, uh, you know, in the last, well, 20 years, say, we've seen phenomenal um, developments in technology, um, not only with cameras going from film to digital, but also with uh, printing technology. Um, the, the printer I use at home, it's a large format 44 inch inkjet printer. Um, and that particular, that's my third one I'm on now. Um, and the, de the, the quality that I get out of that is, is, is awesome. So I think any, any improvements on that now is incremental changes. Um, certainly with digital photography, um, manufacturers are obviously keen to develop new tricks to keep us buying new equipment. Um, but you can only, you know, there's, there's a, you can only have, there's a limit, a balance between the number of pixels um, and also you've got to have uh, the lens quality to resolve the detail with those pixels. So the equipment I'm using now, um, phase one, so the lenses on that, uh, they're designed to resolve detail at 150 megapixels. Um, so, you know, the sharpness out of those is, is phenomenal. And I mean, really, any uh, future improvements, are you re our eyes aren't developing, you know, as we all get older, <laughs> our eyes aren't developing, it's great, so are we really going to see these things? Uh, there is a, you know, there's a limit, really, and we're probably close to it. What else?